The evaluation for recurrent pregnancy loss consists of a peripheral parental blood karyotypes, that is chromosomes on the couple, an anatomic assessment, and most commonly either a office hysteroscopy, a sono, um, HSG, or a hysterosalpingogram. Uh, that's for anatomic factors. For endocrine factors, a hormone profile on cycle day 3, cycle day 10, and perhaps on cycle day 22. These are blood tests that would be obtained. For, for inflammatory factors, an endometrial biopsy looking for a rare entity called endometritis, which is an inflammatory condition of the lining of the uterus might be worthwhile. For women that have had losses, second trimester losses, then a uh, antiphospholipid antibodies, a lupus anticoagulant may be in order, as well as a thrombophilia profile. And these are genetic mutations that thankfully are relatively rare. The median age of loss for those people are basically 20 weeks of pregnancy, certainly after uh, 11 weeks of pregnancy. For the majority of individuals with losses prior to 11 weeks, they're chromosomally abnormal until proven otherwise, so a case could be made for any, any miscarriage to try to have that tissue karyotype, that is try to determine what the chromosomes are, because if it's an abnormality, which six of them are, then that's the reason for the loss. A case may even be made to do a karyotype assessment on an individual one loss, first loss, and if it's abnormal, then perhaps just do a, a parental karyotype on the couple and no other evaluation. If, the, if it's normal, then perhaps go ahead and proceed with an, an evaluation. It's very important for couples, especially the woman suffering losses, to be involved in some sort of program, whether it's a mind-body program, yoga, counseling, exercise, acupuncture, it doesn't matter. Just something they do trying to incorporate this experience of loss into their life rather than their life in this experience of loss, which is an easy thing to do but a very difficult thing to accomplish.